How's it going, everybody? JP here, and this is going to be episode number seven of the Bates Motel, um, titled The Man in Number Nine. And as always, I, I feel like I have to say this every time. I do get uh, some new people, uh, more more newer people um, subscribing off of these videos and uh, you know people that have not watched my channel. So I have to say this every time. Spoiler heavy, I will be spoiling everything, so if you care about the show and don't want to see what happened, if you haven't seen the episode yet or plan to, don't watch this. Um, if not, feel free to check it out and stick around and hear my opinions. Um, but yeah, this one opens up, and uh, it opens, opens up right where the last one ended, and the last episode was one of the more exciting episodes, uh, you know, packed with the most uh, stuff happening, I would say, since the pilot. Um, this one, not so much, you know, it's kind of on a downslope now from, from the high, and, uh, it, uh, it is a little bit, uh, un it's a little bit of an uneventful ep episode, but, um, there still is, you know, the beginning of a, of a new story arc, I guess, and, uh, you know, there's some interesting stuff in here, um, but, uh, it's mainly a, a pretty simple episode. Um, so, the sheriff shows up, and Dylan is standing there, you know, with the empty gun or whatever, and uh, Norma's down there car caring for Norman, and um, the sheriff shows up, you know, disarms Dylan of the empty gun, sees Deputy Shelby dead, and they go inside to talk. It cuts in there, and uh, the sheriff, um, I guess, I suppose Norma filled him in on, on uh, you know, everything. We don't exactly know exactly what she told him about, if she told him everything or some things or whatever. Um, it does not show that. But he says, this is what we're going to do. Um, you know, I've been, uh, we're going to say that I've been, you know, uh, tracking Deputy Shelby for a while. I kind of knew what he was up to. Um, uh, and, you know, this happened and I had to put him down or whatever. It ended in a firefight, you know, basically covering up the whole thing um, for a little bit different of a story. And Dylan is a little bit... Um, you know, he, he's kind of, he's kind of resisting that, uh, story at first. He, he's not, um, you know, he got shot and stuff. He's like, well, what about me? He's, and the cop says, you know, you just ended up getting in the way or whatever. And you could tell that that bothered Dylan a little bit because, you know, he is the hero. He saved his family and stuff. And he probably, um, wants a little bit of gratitude and, you know, a little bit of respect. And, uh, he, he probably doesn't feel as appreciated, um, now knowing that, uh, he just got in the way basically. So I, uh, th there's that little angle there. Um, and another, I don't really like how this scene was. It almost felt a little bit lazy how they just wrapped it up so quick and just, uh, you know, they, they didn't really show you, like tell you what, what really happened in the conversation. Um, you know, it, I, I, I understand that they don't have to, you know, uh, you know, draw it out, map it out and be all like, you know, show everything. They don't need to show everything, but it just, to me, this scene felt a little bit rushed and a tad bit lazy. Um, pretty much the first scene I would say in the show that, uh, kind of, uh, felt like it could have been better. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, uh, after that, you know, the cop leaves or whatever, and, um, I guess it might cut like a week later or close to that or something. I, I don't know, because, um, uh, it looks like everything's getting back to normal. Um, they're renovating the hotel, it's getting ready to open up in a week. And uh, Norman, um, Dylan, uh, uh, Dylan walks down uh, to the you know dinner table or whatever in the kitchen, and uh, Norma made him some breakfast and stuff. And she says thank you for you know saving the family basically and stuff. Um, so you know she's trying to be nice to him a bit. And, um, Dylan says that he's still moving out and that kind of takes Norma off a bit. You know, he, she says, even after everything I told you about your brother or whatever, uh, Dylan says he's still going to move out regardless of that, you know, once his arm, uh, heals or whatever. Um, and then, uh, you know, it, it's a little bit of an argument. Um, after that, uh, Norman, um, I, he, I don't know if it happens right after this, but somewhere in the episode, he discovers a dog under the house. Um, he likes the dog. Um, you know, he definitely, uh, bonds with it a bit, you know, he says he always wants a dog, uh, wanted a dog later on in the episode. Um, it's like a real ugly looking poodle thing that's all like covered in mud and, uh, gross stuff. Um, but he feeds it and stuff and, uh, then it takes off. It's all ground at him and stuff, but, uh, he's quite, um, uh, interested in, um, you know, uh, helping this dog or whatever. Um, after that, uh, Norma 
goes to uh, different businesses, or she plans to go to different businesses in the town and, you know, asks them if, you know, I'll put um, your brochures in my motel and people could see them and all I ask is you do that in return and it's kind of a win-win situation for us, you know, um, I, you know, advertise your business a little bit, you advertise my business a little bit, but the uh, restaurant owner is like, nah, and she's like, you know, why, may I ask why or whatever, and she's like, because I um, you know, I'm very selective with the businesses I work with, and uh, Norma was like, well, what's wrong with mine? And she says, you know, this is small town people talk. Uh, we know, you know, people are saying that he was involved with Deputy Shelby and the whole uh, crazy crime thing that went on, and uh, Norma says, you know, I assure you I wasn't, but uh, she's like, you could be right, but, uh, you know, it's a bit bad for business, basically. So Norma's a little bit bummed about that. She feels like um, you know, lots riding on this opening weekend of the of the hotel, and they don't have any reservations yet. And um, she doesn't want to be the laughing stock of the town or whatever. Um, and uh, she, the the lady says that you know your business is basically taint, tainted now. And um, so Norma's uh, definitely upset about that. Uh, after that, there's a shady looking guy who pulls up to the motel. Uh, Dylan runs into him. Um, and he's just a weird guy, and he's like, you know, what happened to the uh, previous hotel? Why is it called the Bates Motel now? And Dylan says, you know, we are um, the new owners, uh, and the guy asks for Keith Summers, and Dylan says, uh, you know, he's dead or whatever, and um, the guy takes, goes, uh, you know, drives away, and uh, he's kind of a weird, shady-looking dude, though. Um, at first, I was thinking that he might be a cop, but then uh, after the episode progressed a little bit, I was like, yeah, probably not. Um, he probably was involved with the Keith Summers, um, you know, crime thing that was going on there. Um, Norman, you know, shows up at school, and uh, Bradley's back, and she kind of uh, is uninterested in him, you know, not really um, talking to him too much. And... Uh, and, uh, yeah, you could tell that she's really, uh, you know, it's kind of awkward and stuff. Um, after, th there is one good scene that I've seen, um, uh, that really stood out, and it's a scene where Norma is trying to scrub out the blood of Deputy Shelby on the main steps up to the house. And, um, Dylan tells her, you know, you can't, um, scrub blood out of stone. And she's, you know, very determined to get to, she keeps scrubbing away and she talks about how, you know, uh, people were talking in the town and stuff and she doesn't want to be the laughing stock of the town and every time she sees the blood, um, it, you know, brings up bad memories or whatever and she's very determined to get this out and uh, Dylan is pretty much like Norma, you cannot get blood out of stone and walks away and I thought that that scene was you know showed uh, the personality of Norma Bates very good you know um, how she's so determined to do something uh, you know she's just scrubbing and scrubbing this uh, blood and, and it's not gonna come out but uh, she's not the type of person to uh, have somebody say that uh, that it can't come out and you know even uh, she's almost delusional to an extent and uh, I thought that that scene was was a, a very good scene for being, you know, such a short scene. Um, and then, uh, Emma shows up to the house and Norman, uh, you know, she wants to see Norman and, uh, Norma goes upstairs and says, you know, Emma's downstairs, you know, go talk to her or whatever. And Norman says that she, he doesn't want to cause he's still hung up on Bradley. You could tell, um, he's wondering why she hasn't talked to him or anything. Um, and Norma says, you know, um, you know, that Emma girl likes you and she, and, uh, Norman's like, uh, yeah, but it's better not to lead her on. So uh, Norma comes downstairs, tells Emma that he, he's not feeling good. You know, obviously she could tell uh, that Norma was lying. And uh, she goes to walk out. She kind of tears up a bit. Norma kind of, uh, it looks like she feels bad for her. So, she, you know, she asks her if she wants to hang out the, to, the day and, you know, help her with uh, some stuff for the hotel and stuff, or motel. Um and uh, they go do a little bit of bonding, I guess, driving. And Bradley, or uh, Emma tells Norma about Bradley. And um, uh, they end up, <laughs> it's, it's kind of an interesting scene, but uh, they end up going to spy on Bradley at her yoga class. And Norma very much dislikes this Bradley girl. And f it's, you know, not for any specific type of reason. It's kind of uh, deeper than that. Um, we get a weird flashing uh, vision type scene that uh, is, is kind of weird. And um, then uh, Norma goes home and talks to 
Norman about uh, Bradley and, uh, you know, about um, uh, not, you know, going around and having sex with girls and stuff. And it, it's kind of a, also kind of a weird scene, but, um, it, you know, Norman tells her, you know, I really like her and stuff. And uh, then he goes to, uh, uh, he goes to see her because him and his mom get into an argument and he eventually go goes to her house and she basically you know he kind of spills his heart a bit and she basically says you know like just don't like you that way or whatever and you know kind of pisses him off and he decides to go um storm out and walk down the road and as he's walking down the road he's kind of saying what his mother was telling him earlier he's repeating it uh which is very norman bates like so i definitely like that um it didn't feel perfect though. It it it, oh, it didn't feel forced, but it didn't feel n completely natural either. Um, so I think they need to work on that a bit. Even though the shows are already you know recorded and filmed and whatever, <laughs> but uh, um, I hope they uh, ease into it a little bit more and make it feel you know perfectly natural because that's what was so good about the original Psycho series is everything felt. Um, natural with the Norman Bates character and um, it doesn't feel as natural in this show but it's uh, it's not bad either it's definitely good um, so you know Bradley says she saw it and stuff Norman goes home sees his dog there because um, his mom said he could have it and he calls it across the road he gets hit by a car and he pretty much like just melts and um, you know his mom's like he, he's like I'm gonna take it to uh, Emma's because uh, like I said er, er, in an earlier episode Emma's dad is a uh, he does taxidermy and uh, Norman's like I'm gonna get her to fix it uh, get his get her dad to fix it and uh, you know Norman's like that's crazy Norman and he's like flips out it's not crazy and stuff um so yeah uh, He's pretty uh, messed up. Also, there was um, the guy. The, the, at the end of the episode, the guy um, is the the guy. I, I forgot to mention, but the guy does come back and get the get the room. And um, he is a very shady dude. Doesn't want to give pay him with a credit card. Gives him cash. Um, he has like a huge stack of hundreds in his pocket and stuff. Uh, definitely a a weird, strange looking guy. And he. Um, gets a room there. He ends up going back into the uh, office um, at the end of the episode and says that he needs um, at the I forget like every other month or something. He needs um, all the cabins for a week uh, for his business uh, where he works in sales. And um, you know, Norma's a little bit hesitant at first. She's like, "Is this illegal?" And he's like, "No, it's not. Nothing's illegal." And um, definitely a weird dude. But uh, that's that that the guy. Going into the room, I was happy about that because um, it was finally getting to the point where it's like the Bates Motel, you know. Um, I, to me, a big part of the original series was the people staying in the motels and stuff, and um, I, I really liked that. So it definitely brought a little bit of a classic Psycho vibe to it with the guy staying. You know, this was a shorter episode, um, you know, with not a lot of things happening, but it still ended up taking me forever to talk about it so I apologize for the <laughs> length of these videos I know uh, some of you guys uh, still watch them anyway so I salute you for that um, uh, see you guys next week um, this episode was okay but uh, yeah uh, interested to see where the series goes with this uh, guy in the cabin so uh, see you guys